mode, which is exactly what she was talking about. We've all been there. Uh, I'm waiting for this to come up, so that's why I'm like in my own panic mode right now. Uh, and we're going to go real fast because I realize that we only have 10 minutes and we're just going to uh, get through this. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself while we wait for this. Uh, so my name's Amy. I work at Stripe. I used to work on our infrastructure engineering team uh, where I was working on incident response and uh, incident management. Today, I live here in Singapore. I work on uh, Stripe's main products, which involve payments APIs. Uh, really, really happy to talk to you all about what we're doing out here in Singapore. Really, uh, it's been pretty magical since I moved out here since in December. Um, and maybe it will show up. No? Yes. yes. All right, we're getting there. OK, so we're going to talk about how Stripe automates incident management. That's uh, the title of the talk. And I hope this is, nope, got to turn it on. This is a, is it moving? All right, cool. Thank you. Uh, all right, so now I can get to the slides. All right, what is Stripe? Let me quickly tell you. Stripe builds economic infrastructure for, the, ex, infrastructure for the internet, which is so many syllables, doesn't really mean anything. It really means that we just help people build businesses on the internet, take payments, anything you want to do. Uh, we have an engineering office out here in Singapore. Again, happy to talk to you. Two of my coworkers are right in front, so we're all here to talk about Stripe. And uh, I think you might have figured it out. We, since we help people process payments on the internet, Security is a huge deal in the sense that we are processing raw credit card information, which is highly sensitive, highly regulated. And on your side, reliability is a huge deal. You don't want to you know, take money from a user and then drop that information and not realize that you actually did move money, um, and so on. I already introduced myself. Going to keep moving. Got to get through this. All right. How many of you raise your hands if you've ever just broken something on the internet or on, at work that caused, a pro caused your product to stop working? Been there. All right. Just think about it. What did you do? Did you start screaming? You start crying? You just start yelling? You say, like, help. You page someone. You maybe find a room. You like kick someone out of a conference room. You say, this is the war room now. And everyone gets in there. All these has probably happened. I think I put a list up here. And so, you know, all of you are just like, oh, no. So, um, you know, I, I always think of this cat typing GIF as like exactly how I feel when I'm panicking. Like, I don't even know if I'm paying the right keys. I'm just trying to go for it. And, you know, that's only four things, though. Like, you know, it might be manageable. Like, I might get used to it if, like, I, things kept breaking and every time all I had to do was, like, break out my laptop and try to fix the problem. But the reality is that uh, you, there's a huge, like, breadth of more things that you need to do when you're solving an incident. You've got to, like, uh, you got to set, send out messages to your users. You've got to update your, like, status page. Maybe your company uses, like, Twitter to, like, announce things to your users. Maybe there's some, like, regulatory obligations there where, uh, in, for example, in Stripe's case, if we're down for a certain period of time in certain countries, we actually have to notify regulators. Maybe you have to write down a bunch of, like, post-incident remediation items. Maybe you have to track a timeline. Maybe you have to put up, like, a root cause analysis in case you're obligated to do that. Like, honestly, the list goes on and on, and really what you're trying to get out of this is that there's a lot of things. And so you're not just one cat typing. You're like five cats typing, which is a horrifying feeling. It's like all of you are just panicking and going for it. And so I kind of want to just illustrate like how it feels to me, at least, to like think about incidents. Um, and describing this whole process, it ends up making me feel like I've got this, like, I'm just like trying to do something simple. I'm just trying to fix it. I'm trying to like rip up this milk, and then suddenly there's just milk everywhere. So that's the kind of like infomercial nightmare thing that scenario I'm trying to sell you on. And I'll give you the solution, which is the big red button. Um, again, I think it sort of ties into like what we just talked about with like, accessibility. I think like everyone wants a tool that like kind of just like predicts what you want, that gets out of your way, like lets you do what you need to do while take, like, automating everything that uh, robots are good at. So I'm going to do like a really fast whirlwind tour of just like all the cool features in the big red button. Don't worry, got the accessibility note. We're going to zoom in. Uh, so let's say I have an incident. My cat is missing. I didn't want to use a real incident because I think my comms team would have uh, fired me. So we're talking about my cat. Uh, all I have to do here is just type in something really simple. It doesn't have to be a like high lift. It doesn't have to be a complete sentence. Just got to type something in. I get a automatic code name here, which uh, it says magnitude pursue in case that's not visible. These are just two random words. And, then, and the good news here is that I don't have to think about what to name my incident, like what to refer to it as. It should be a secret because like, if I name my incident something like lost all my user's credit card data, then uh, that would 
definitely be on Hacker News, definitely not be at the front page test. So we get a secret code name so that we can refer to our incidents uh, without revealing extra information. We auto automatically generate it so that people don't have to think about it because if you get people to think about it, they're just going to start key smashing. Uh, you have to kind of just like really quickly, like you don't have to be accurate, but just like kind of guess like level one, level two, level three, like how bad is it? If it guys down, you just, you're on level one and you just keep going. Um, this box is automatically checked off. It's do you need an incident commander or incident PM? The incident PM would just be in charge of like, it's just a person who is trained and on call who is like ready to kind of walk you through your steps. They know how to page people. They know how to like navigate and get people in the room. Um, it also just really quickly just tells you who else is going to get contacted so you don't have to wonder like, I think I'm pretty sure I need to talk to the legal team for like regulatory reasons, but like how do I even get in touch with them? Fortunately, it just tells you that. And then we're going to click it and here's the next page. Uh, this is everything that happened and you can kind of get this really quick view of like, you got your JIRA tickets, you got a Google Doc, you got a Slack channel and so on and so on. We'll zoom in right here on the uh, metadata. Uh, the Slack channel, you'll automatically get invited to it, and like that's kind of where, and you can see the code name right there. We're gonna go into this QA, as in uh, this is I made this I made this incident for real, but in test mode because I didn't want to actually alarm my coworkers about my cat. Fun fact: I thought I was I thought I was like being slick by making it in test mode, but then my coworker messaged me like, "Oh my god, is your cat missing?" And I was like, "No, no, no, I'm just I'm just making slides." <laughs> so we're gonna go into the Slack channel right here, and so everything gets loaded up. We get that I am the uh, person who's uh, in charge of this incident because I was the one who clicked the button. I get all the links that I saw from the previous page. I even get some nice Slack bots that uh, are internal bots that we have. For example, Stripe is constantly doing load tests, and so we have a bot, and you can just tell the load bot to stop doing load tests in case that you, in case you think that the extra load is what is causing the problems. Uh, and later on, you'll start getting reminders. So like every couple of minutes, it'll say, like, yeah, did you remember to like update the Twitter page? Did you remember to update uh, status.stripe.com? Uh, just in case, you know, like in the heat of the moment, people forget to do all these things. Uh, paper trail, it's kind of like our thing of just saying, like, I want to track that this thing happened just in case like someone joins into the incident and says, like, OK, but like, what about the backyard? Did you already check? They can just look at the paper trail and see, like, yes, I did check the backyard. I can uh, write down some notes for like, afterwards. I should say, like, yeah, I should probably should have fixed the uh, back door, I guess, but I'm not going to do it right now. I just need to remember to do it later. Um, all that stuff comes back up into the web UI. Uh, I can do slash page to page someone. I asked my friend to, uh, my friend Aaron, like, hey, did you see my cat? And he comes in and says, no, did you check the crawl space? Didn't see her. The really convenient thing here is that there is a emoji reaction in Slack, and then I can like say paper trail, and that will just save it right back in the UI. Then, Good news, found my cat. She was next to the food bowl. Turns out she was just hungry. I don't know why I didn't check the food bowl first. But that is how I can close out the incident. Really nice thing about Big Red Bun, just to close this all out, is that it will move the JIRA ticket that was created into like a resolve state. It will close it out. It will send out email updates. Uh, anyone who was wondering like what happened here, they'll just read the update and say, oh, it's next to the food bowl. Got it. Uh, and there's a poll in case uh, anyone doesn't believe that I found my cat. They can veto, and then we can keep the incident open. And then afterwards, I forgot, uh, <laughs> it's great that the bot tells me what to do because otherwise I would forget. The incident uh, bot will just tell me like afterwards, you have to do, do all the post-incident analysis. Like here is the link to get started. Okay, now we're gonna really quickly go through all the infrastructure and like just like what was cool about designing this tool. We have the web UI that you all just saw. Here's the uh, big red button like server. I think that the interesting insight here is that we kind of have to assume that every single part of this tool can be broken. Um, usually when you're talking about like kind of a catastrophic failures, like let's say our internal network is down. If your internal network is down, then pretty much every single service internally is down. So we can't assume that like anything that the big red button is doing will actually be working. So uh, we actually kind of like have this like priority list where we say like, number one priority, let's try to get the Slack channel up. So we'll just do that one first. After that, we'll uh, kind of like prioritize, but like less strongly prioritize that like, yes, you should try to make a Google Doc. Yes, you should make a Jira. You should make a PagerDuty page. You should try to send out emails. You should try to store in the database. But let's assume that all these things probably will fail. Um, Slack is kind of our main tool for like getting an incident event through, as in like when I type in an update, that's coming back to the, stripe, uh, to the big red button server. And those, in, those events are getting propagated out there. I think the interesting insight here is that um, it kind of just goes back to coding first principles where like, oh yeah, I forgot I had the screenshot. It says Google Doc to come. 
because Slack comes first, Google Docs comes second, so it's not ready to do that yet. Uh, when an incident fails, we or when a task fails, there's a retry button, so you can just like mindlessly click on it. I see that zero minute sign. Uh, we inherit from services. That's where I was going with the coding first principles. Uh, Slack service, email service, so on. Inherit. You'll make some events. You include some human readable recovery steps. And now you can have milk every day. That is the end of that. All right. Have fun with your incidents. Thank you, Amy.